and my name is Igor Bilaev, and uh, I have started to work with uh, biological effects of microwaves in 1986 in Moscow, in Russia, and I still uh, collaborate with my colleagues uh, at Russian Academy of Science. In 1994, I have moved to Sweden uh, to work at Stockholm University, and uh, I will present here some work done by my research group at Stockholm University. And now I work for Cancer Research Institute, Slovak Academy of Science, in Bratislava, Slovakia. And my work is supported by grants from European Union, Slovak government, and Environmental Health Trust. So as Dr. <laughs> Davis already said, um, electromagnetic spectrum um, has very wide frequency range from zero so-called direct uh, current or static magnetic fields and up to 10 to the power 22 frequency, hertz frequency uh, for ionizing radiation. But we are interested now in very narrow frequency band, which covers uh, frequency range from 800 million hertz till 3 billion hertz and uh, that is so-called microwave frequency range, which is used for mobile communication. As you probably know, uh, current safety standards are most often based on so-called thermal effects of microwaves, what means that according to those standards, if you hit the biological tissue, then it may be dangerous. If you don't hit biological issues, issues then it's uh, safe. And uh, by some reason, safety standards uh, vary significantly between countries, and the question is why. And the answer is very simple, because uh, there are many hundreds of studies which show so-called non-thermal biological effects of microwaves without any heating of biological tissue. And actually, if you look at the literature and some reviews which tell you that almost 70% of available experimental studies, they do report non-thermal biological effects, while the rest, 30%, show some negative findings. And in this review, I have, uh, I have, uh, reviewed actually those studies and this, this review is available on the internet. And the most important issue for non-thermal biological effects is that contrary to thermal effects which are dependent mostly on delivered energy, non-thermal effects depend on many other variables and conditions of exposure. And some of them you can see here, it's a frequency which is measured in hertz, how many times uh, where is the field as the place of exposure, modulation, how modulated the signal, polarization, coherence time, dose and duration of exposure. How long do you expose your object? And uh, intermittence of exposure, how often you switch on and off the field, and electromagnetic environmental, conditions like static magnetic field and ELF stray fields as a place of exposure. As you can see, there is a lot of variables which are important for non-thermal biological effects. And of course, if you don't keep those variables perfectly in different studies, so you may come to wrong conclusions that there is no reproducibility in this kind of um, uh, biological studies. So, and I will present very short uh, piece of our work. We analyzed <coughs> DNA damage in uh, human cells. We focused on stem cells, exposing those cells using very well-defined uh, experimental system and looking at DNA damage. So to analyze DNA damage, we used very high sensitivity um, method which give you possibility actually to visualize uh, double strand breaks, most important DNA damage, uh, as those uh, nicely looking uh, colored spots 
uh, on this slide. So each sport here represent really double strand break. So what we have found, we have found that <coughs> stem cells with multiple uh, DNA damage actually uh, were very sensitive to exposure to microwaves. So microwaves completely blocked uh, repair of DNA damage in these cells. What was especially uh, interested, interested that uh, stem cells were more sensitive to, to microwave exposure from mobile phone as compared to differentiated human cells like fibroblast uh, skin cells. And also they responded to more frequency channels because fibroblasts, for example, they responded to only selected frequency channels from GSM uh, mobile communications, while uh, stem cells seem to be more responsible, responsive to frequency channels. What is also important is that uh, contrary to differentiated cells, which were able to adapt to exposure, to chronic exposure, stem cells, they did not adapt to chronic exposure. We still saw inhibition of uh, DNA damage repair during chronic exposure, uh, which took uh, weeks. And those results with stem cells may be especially interested because stem cells are considered to be the target of origination of different types of cancer. <clears throat> especially it's well known for leukemias, but now emerging data showing that actually it's also valid for many solid tumors, including brain tumors. And there are actually very well-defined genetic mechanisms and also recently suggested epigenetic mechanism how cancer arise from stem cells so and in conclusion we can say that independence on frequency channel not all frequency channels are effective actually non-thermal microwaves from mobile phones inhibited DNA repair in human cells. These effects indicate severe stress response and disruption of the balance between cell repair systems and DNA damage. Importantly, human stem cells were most sensitive to microwaves and did not adapt to chronic exposure, providing mechanistic link to those epidemiological data which show increased brain cancer risk in heavy users of mobile phones. And finally, I would like to show you some key reference from, uh, from our work and to thank you for your attention. <laughs>